Hey guys, Lulu here. I do hope you're having a shit day. Hmm, I bet I got you there, didn't I? I'm just fucking with you. I'm like rumple fucking stilt skin. You'll never know what I'll do next. Anyways, before magic comes at a price, let's start this shit. Have you ever been really hyped for a new MMO that is about to release? Counted down the days to the launch, loaded it up like it's Christmas morning, and all of a sudden you're hit with that feeling. Come on, baby, you know the one. The realization you're at the start of a treadmill again and immediately feel that spark of excitement fuck off quicker than a fly on shit. Fuck. Well, it happened to me too. I had this very same feeling about Throne and Liberty recently. To give it credit, the graphics are fucking awesome. The world seems great. It sounds like I should totally love this game, right? But it confused me because game critics everywhere are praising this game as the return of Christ himself. And I was left thinking, I actually cannot be fucking asked to play this right now. I just didn't feel like committing the time to start all over again. Well, butter my butt and call me a motherfucking biscuit. That what I just explained, my little droogy, is what the scholars long since past call MMO fatigue. At first I thought it was me just being a whiny little bitch. That I probably needed to take a break from games and touch some grass. Touch grass? Me? Yeah, fucking right. However, that is just not the issue. I took a closer look, and here is where my rant begins. I hope you're the type of person who puts their crocs in sport mode because I've got a good one for you today. Are you ready? MMO fatigue. It's like having your favorite burger from McDonald's and for some reason it just doesn't have that same magic sparkle that it had. Like back in the day when you lost your burger virginity, when you French kissed it like it was prom night. I think once you've played a lot of games, you're looking for that next slice of cheese that tastes just a little bit better. But you flip that slice of cheese over and realize it's a crusty piece of shit. Your expectations and bar are forever raising. Hey, let me ask you, when was the last time a game truly hooked you? I remember the last time a MMO really got me. Teenager hooked on violent computer games. He's playing them an incredible 16 hours a day. This is more than a game. It's an addiction and an illness. I can quit whenever I want. This really kicks ass, doesn't it? Shit, that ventrilo sound got me. Anyway, it was around 2010 when I first played World of Warcraft. At that time, it would have been Wrath of the Lich King. Best fucking expansion, by the way. I kid you not. I literally no-lifed the shit out of that game like I've never no-lifed a no-life before. I'm talking going sweatier than the underside of Satan's nutsack. The game had me hooked all the way up until Legion. That is when disaster struck. Like a BMW in a Japanese porno. After Legion, I think, wow, hit its peak. People eventually grew tired of grinding out their artifact weapon. It was fucking awful. The formula of wow had became incredibly stale, and it took them many years after to fully recover until recently, with the war within. About damn fucking time. When I look at other MMOs, I think it's the same thing that eventually happens to most of them over time. They just play it too fucking safe because the developers are afraid to fail. The problem with that is the formula becomes too repetitive, especially if there are no new surprises or lack of innovation. Of course, players are going to get bored quickly and drop it like a sack of shit. Oh yeah, a good example of that happening. Check out my Dawn Trail review if you haven't seen it. Go watch it right now, you sausage fest. Bear with me, I need to use more than my five brain cells. Give me a sec. Whilst my brain cells were dry humping, something came to me. You know all these competitive shooters that are releasing these days? They're often cheap, rehashed copies of what came before them, more than often dead on arrival. I think developers are trying way too hard to make games that feel familiar, with hopes that people will like them. But in reality, it's a double-edged sword. I think I can speak for myself that I want to see some innovation, not a Call of Duty ripoff with one new mechanic. Player will get bored because they've seen the same shit before, nothing new to master or explore, thus having little to no emotional attachment to it, if that wasn't a good enough example for you. 
Look at all these shitty Souls-like games we've been getting recently. There have been a few at most that really have reviewed well. They're just trying to ride off the success of Elden Ring, trying to get a taste of that cash mountain pie while motherfuckers my wallet is closed. You wanna know something funny? I actually started to consider to myself recently. Man, am I getting too old for gaming? I'm 30 for those wondering. Yeah, don't start. All five foot zero inches of me will beat you at a round of Magic the Gathering. Fear me. I just thought though that games these days just don't have that magic. You know, like they did back when I was a kid. You know, games like Banjo-Kazooie, Halo 3, Fable, any of the Tomb Raider games. I mean, what the fuck happened? But wait, just as I was about to give in to despair, a savior arrived when we needed it the most. Like Obi-Wan to Princess Leia as our only hope. POWER! Baldur's Gate literally conquered my life non-stop for two weeks. It took me back to those days where I'd wake up to play the game all day, chug boatloads of monster energy drinks, and stay there until I passed the fuck out. I'm not saying games are shit these days, but it's like I have to cosplay as Aladdin and go to the Cave of Fucking Wonders in a desperate search to find a diamond in the rough. I swear to Widowmaker's ass cheeks, it's rare to find something outstanding or even original these days out of all the games that have released this year, which is around 12,000. Yeah, you heard right. With only four to five of them are Game of the Year contenders. And that's when I fucking figured it out. The answer is simple. Excuse me before I act up like Russell Crowe from A Beautiful Mind. So many games these days are released unfinished or even rushed. They have battle passes, the same bullshit greedy monetizations all in efforts to rinse people of their hard-earned money. Predictable shallow stories, same cover and shoot mechanics yoinked from Gears of War, same fantasy style Elder Scrolls ripoff, even games which are pandering to minorities. Just look how the fuck that's working out for them. I think AAA gaming has become too large and expensive, that studios have become creatively shackled and bankrupt. Games used to be designed by passionate nerds like you and I. Now, decisions are made by a committee of suit wearing corpos who don't understand games and only know about one thing, how to make money for investors. Studios used to be more willing to take risks, which allowed for creativity and most importantly, innovation. Wait, hold thy fucking horses, Lulu. We got off the yellow brick road for a moment there. Oh shit, yeah, back to the main topic. I do have a small slither of hope for the future with ashes of creation just over the horizon. It appears to have been built from the ground up with some interesting systems, some which have taken inspiration from Arc Age. There is also the new Riot MMO, which has many people, including myself, excited. Ghost Crawler from the original WoW team left Riot to make his own too, which has some pretty lofty but exciting ideas. Oh shit, please be good. So it is a very exciting future for fans of this genre. Games like WoW and Final Fantasy XIV will have to change drastically to compete or die out. Either way, I imagine Yoshi P will be cracking the whip on the dev team, probably to make an emergency ultimate raid again. We need a Final Fantasy XVII online already. Then again, people have been saying that for years like, Oh, X game is definitely the next WoW killer. But somehow WoW just keeps clinging on like a clag nut in a hairy dog's ass. I guess a part of my frustration is that MMOs these days are still based on the fundamentals that games like EverQuest and World of Warcraft popularized. They still haven't changed in 20 fucking years. No shit people are tired of playing the same damn thing after all this time. If you look at all the MMOs currently out right now, most of them follow the same recipe. You know the same user interface, same tab target combat system with global cooldowns. Pick up a quest, kill 10 boars, and hand in the quest to the derpy quest giver. Dungeons, raids, blah blah, you know where I'm going with this, right? I think off the top of my head, I can think of only a couple of games that do it differently, um, one of which is Guild Wars 2. Even if I don't personally like the combat system in the game, none can deny that they do have the best mount system in the genre. So good that WoW, as always, yoinked it and put their own spin on it for their Dragonflight expansion. So the question is how do developers fix game fatigue? I think my answer to this problem is to tell these developers the wheel is spinning but the creativity hamster is dead. 
I mean, someone has to tell him, right? Okay, seriously though, if I were a game director, I would want to give the player something alien and unfamiliar to learn and discover, to innovate. I know it's hard, but roll with me. Make something challenging. Challenging is not always boring. Beating a challenge will have a lasting impact on you. I still remember clearly the nerd scream I let out when I beat Deathwing after numerous attempts. Introduce something that has not been seen in other games, be it mechanics or interesting gameplay. I mean, a good hook is a compelling story that people will become emotionally attached to. I mean, Final Fantasy XIV has that. Shame about the Wish.com combat system, though. Give us characters that we can get attached to and be inspired by. But wait, my rant is just about to get juicy. Oh boy, this gets me pissed. About as pissed as a mosquito in a fucking mannequin factory. The fucking monetization! I think monetization has a huge part to play here. Whilst free to play has its benefits of trying the game out for free, you have a higher chance of quitting because you have no skin in the game. If you've dropped a big fat fucking $60 Benjamin bomb on a game, you're probably gonna give the game a better shot. Well, that's just me anyways. Ugh, fuck me sideways. I think MMOs have become way, way too greedy on monetizing cosmetics. I know some of you twats will say, ah, it's only cosmetics who gives a shit. Well, I fucking do. It's killed the integrity of the game. I remember back before Transmog was added to WoW, it was fucking awesome. If you saw someone standing in Dalaran kitted out in full heroic raid gear, you knew they were the fucking shit. In fact, I remember seeing a death knight in full raid gear. It inspired me to get into raiding because I wanted to look like a motherfucking badass too. Skip to 2024, that feeling has been completely stripped from the game because you can now skip the hard effort. You can simply purchase that badass appearance from the cash shop or use a gold token for a boost. That cosmetic outfit could have been tied to some meaningful achievement or something badass. What used to be a status symbol of skill is now a status symbol of real world wealth. I mean, some of you might even prefer that. I don't know. I know the world ain't all rainbows and bunny farts. And Papa Blizzard needs to make a buck. So be a good little pay pig and open your wallet. Have you seen this, by the way? Blizzard just couldn't fucking help themselves, could they? They just released a $90 in-game mount. Yeah, you heard right, $90 for a fucking in-game mount. Jesus fucking Christ! That is the cost of almost two triple A video games. So what do you get for your 90 doubloons? The mount has access to the auction house, mail, and shop. But it's funny because it released alongside one of the most broken patches in recent history. It's like, fuck don't spit in our mouths and call it a beverage blizzard. Ah, uh, who the fuck am I to judge about how people spend their money? You know when they say a donut is only as good as it's filling? Well, that is what gameplay is to games. Gameplay is what comes first for many, including myself. For me, if an MMO has shit gameplay or a poor combat system, I will instantly be turned off by it because it is the foundation of the game. I swear, I have lost count of how many times I've seen people comment on my videos that have said they liked the story of Final Fantasy XIV, but my fucking god, the combat system feels like it has been developed for people who have the reaction time of a retarded goat and view the world through a kaleidoscope. On top of that, with that global cooldown, it feels like they're playing the game with dial-up internet. You've got mail. Ugh. Sorry I went back there for a moment. That sound gives me PTSD. Yeah, try sneaking on the internet late at night as a kid with that shit sounding off. So whilst I was researching, which I'm shit at by the way, I found out that the developers behind Arc Age 2 mentioned that they were frustrated that every MMO they've tried always has that same clunky tab target combat system. The reason being, for their game they're wanting to bring a single player combat system into an MMO. It sounds ambitious for sure, but damn now, but this is exactly what gets my nipples around. Finally, innovation. I wonder when the West will catch up. With fresh ideas coming from Eastern developers, things hopefully will only get better from here. I don't know. Maybe I've been huffing the copium for too long. We shall see. If I had to give one message to the developers of future up and coming games, it's innovate with your game or die a swift death. Right, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here before the Final Fantasy police finds me. Oh, and subscribe and like the video before I threaten you with something not threatening at all, like a picture of your last selfie. Anyway, get the fuck out of here.